Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. Options investors may lose the entire amount of their investment in a relatively short period of time. Hello. Today we're going to talk about common option trading mistakes that beginning option traders make. First of all, before we get too far, let's talk a little bit about what an option is. An option in general is a contract and it gives the owner the right to buy or sell an asset at a fixed price for a specific period of time. It then obligates the seller of the contract to take the opposite side if and when the right embedded in the option contract is exercised by the owner. Bottom line is, the buyers of contracts, they pay cash and for that cash they get a right. The seller of the contract receives the cash and for receiving that cash they take on an obligation. All right, the first most common mistake that we're going to look at is buying out of the money option contracts as their first trade. Out of the money option contracts are very compelling to beginning option traders because they're cheap but they're cheap for a reason. So we have to talk a little bit about that reason to understand why we are making that mistake. Now, before we get too far though, let's define in, at, and out of the money option contracts. On our graphic, we actually see the y-axis is the stock price. And our stock price here is going from 50 all the way up to 70. The x-axis is the strike price of our option contract. And today we're talking about a call option that allows you to call stock away. Our strike price in this instance is a 60 strike call option. So if the stock is at 60 and the strike is 60, that's considered an at the money option contract. It's fairly intuitive. As the stock price starts going up, guess what happens to the 60 strike call? It becomes in the money. And if the stock strikes going down, guess what happens to the call? It becomes out of the money. Now let's look at an actual example. We have XYZ, which is a fake stock. It's trading at $60 a share. Our forecast is that we are bullish on the marketplace, so we're gonna buy an option contract. We think the stock market is going to go up. We see our XYZ 30-day 65 strike call option is trading for a dollar. Now, that's a very inexpensive relative to buying the stock. If it's trading for a dollar, that means that our total cost is $100 plus commission to buy this option contract. Now. Our max risk will be that $1 if we only buy one option contract or $100. Our max profit, it's unlimited on the upside. If the stock went to infinity, we would get infinity, highly unlikely. But if it did, we'd have that, that type of upside. Our break even now has changed quite a bit though. Our break even is our strike price plus the premium that we paid for the option contract or $66 here in our example. Now let's look at a graphic of this actual trade and compare the profit and loss graph to the, of the option contract to what the stock profit and loss graph is. We see here on the blue line, we see the stock is trading at 60. So where we cross the x-axis on our graph is going to be our break-even point. But with the option contract, we're actually going to the strike price plus what we paid for it. So our break-even is $66 here. And so here's the difference about just buying the stock outright relative to buying that option contract. If you buy that option contract, you're saying you expect the stock to move in this instance 10% before the expiration of that option contract. And we're only talking about 30 days here. So yes, that option contract was cheap, but realize if the stock only goes half the distance. It's at $60 and it goes up to 63 and it doesn't make it by that expiration date. It's possible to be correct on your forecast and actually lose your entire investment on the option contract. So how can you trade smarter? Let's not buy that contract. Let's look at selling the option contract. So the next example that we're going to look at here is actually selling a covered call on a stock that we own. So let's pretend that we own 100 shares of that stock. In other words, instead of just buying the call option at a 65 strike, we own 100 shares of the stock at 60. We then go out and look at this option contract that's trading with a 65 strike for $1, and we decide we're going to sell that, receive the cash, and take on an obligation to sell the stock if it goes higher. So, our example. 
We're long 100 shares. We're bullish on the stock. We think the stock could go up to 65. We wouldn't mind selling it if it made it all the way there. Uh, XYZ 30 day 65 strike calls trading for a dollar. We sell that. Our max risk is still substantial in that we own the stock. So we still have a lot of downside risk of owning the stock. But the option contract actually increases our profitability if the stock goes up to 65. So our max profit is only going to be six. We have an opportunity loss if the market continues on up. Our break even here, we've actually lowered it from where the stock was at. It's 60 minus the premium received or 59. And if we look at the graphic here, we have the actual stock price on the x-axis. We have the profit and loss on the y-axis. And we notice that we lowered our break even. Instead of making the break even higher by buying the call outright, we've now lowered the break even down to 59, which is the price of the stock minus the premium received. So when you're thinking about buying option contracts, you gotta realize that they are priced much differently than buying stocks. So as opposed to learning by buying options, sometimes it's better to learn by selling options. So the strategy that I suggest for beginning option traders to start with, covered call writing. Another common mistake that beginning option traders make is not understanding the leverage that an option contract brings to the marketplace. So now let's talk about the leverage factor and let's talk about the most basic option strategy that is out there. Let's just talk about buying a call option. This call option is gonna give us the right to call stock away at a specified price that we're gonna reference as the strike price for a limited time period. We're going to look at two different scenarios. We're going to talk about Peter, and we're going to talk about Linda. And so in this instance, Peter finds out about option trading, gets all excited about it, goes out and notices that, well, the stock's trading at 60. If I buy 100 shares of stock, that would be $6,000. Peter then notices that the call option, the 60 strike call option, is trading for $3. And that call option represents 100 shares, so we're talking about $300 for one call option. Well, with that $6,000, Peter quickly notices that, oh yes, I can buy 20 contracts and 20 times 100 times three also equals $6,000. And hence, I can spend my entire lot on these option contracts. All right, now let's talk a little bit about Linda. Linda has the same amount of money in her account. Uh, she has $6,000, normally buys 100 shares of stock. If she thinks the stock's going to go up or if she's bullish on the marketplace, that's what she would do. She realizes in option trading, I can actually limit risk by buying that option. So normally buys 100 shares of stock, guess what Linda does? She buys one of the at-the-money 60-strike call option and spends $300 of her $6,000. So there's a lot of difference between what Peter and Linda are doing with the options. Linda now has limited her risk to that $300. Peter has increased his risk and now has a decaying asset where he could lose his entire investment if the stock doesn't go anywhere over the life of the option contract. So how can we trade smarter? Well, if we're looking at the general rule with beginning option traders should be that if you usually trade 100 shares of stock, you should start out by buying one option contract. Uh, the, the capital involved in, in buying one option contract is going to be your total risk on that option trade. So when I'm looking at, at buying one contract, I just wanna talk about the percentage gain if I'm correct on my forecast. So bottom line is start small. Start with a little bit of capital. Could you buy two option contracts? Yes, but ease your way into it and get a handle of the leverage factor that's involved in option trading. Another common mistake that beginning option traders make is not having a defined plan before someone gets into the trade. So if I look at option trading, when you're trading both stocks and options, it's critical to control your emotion. And that's what this plan is supposed to accomplish. So having a plan and working your plan is critical. Because of the leverage factor in options, you have to ask fast. If you've said, you ever said to yourself after placing a trade, well, I'm just going to give it one more day, you're basically are guilty of not sticking with your plan. 
a friend of mine that is also an option trading mentor uh, always says to me that I'd rather teach option trading to a fifth grader than to an adult. Why is that? Well, if you tell a fifth grader to do something, they'll usually do it. You talk to an adult specifically in the stock market, they always say, well, the Fibonacci might have bounced off the Bollinger Band. I just figured one more day, it would probably end up coming back. Bottom line is, if you have a plan, you need to stick to it. It's a lot better sometimes to take a small loss than stick around and take a big loss. I like to say when I'm trading, some of my best trades are trades where I stuck to the plan and I got a small loss just before the market went against me hard. So it's quite simple. How can we trade smarter? Well, before you get into a trade, you wanna know, okay, where is the downside risk? Where is the upside risk? When am I willing to get out on the downside? And when do I want to get out on the upside? And once you have that plan in place, it's very critical that you stick to it. Uh, this is a very common mistake, specifically with option traders, because when you come from the stock market, you can just buy a stock and a lot of people will just hold it forever. And that's a common strategy. But in the options world, there's a time factor. So it's more critical in the options world to have a plan than it could ever be in the stock trading world. So simple request. Once you put on the plan, stick with it. The next common mistake that we see beginning option traders make is not being open to more advanced option strategies. The biggest thing about option contracts is that they have a time component embedded in the option contract. Specifically, if you're looking at buying at the money option contracts, the stock is 60, the strike is 60, there is a lot of time premium in that option contract. So let's talk a little bit about how options decay as as they approach expiration that time premium component what happens to it and we're going to find out that not only do options decay they decay at an accelerated rate as expiration approaches so in our example here we have a 90-day option contract it's an at the money option contract that means the stock price is equal to the strike price and we see that uh, with 90 days remaining, that option contract is trading for $4.75. If we look at the 60-day option contract, we're going to pretend nothing else happens in the marketplace. In other words, the stock doesn't move. Uh, none of the other factors that drive the option market are changing. And we just look at a 60-day option contract and we see that just from time decay, our option goes from $4.75 down to $3.90. Then let's go fast forward in time again, same scenario. Nothing happens, all that happens is time decay happens. And we see that we go from a 60-day contract to a 30-day contract. And now our option went from $3.90 down to $2.73. And guess what? When we get from the 30 days all the way down to zero days, well, that $2.73, if the stock has not moved at all, it's still at the money, has to go all the way to zero. So from 90 days down to 60 days, we lost 85 cents. From 60 days down to 30 days, we lost $1.17. And then the last 30 days, it's like, wham, my sled hit the tree. I went all the way down to zero, so we lost $2.73. Okay, so how can we mitigate the effects of time decay in an options strategy? So how can you trade smarter? In this instance, we need to talk about a strategy where we are buying an option contract and selling an option contract at the same time. This strategy is called a long call spread, or since we are using calls, a lot of people will refer to it as a bull call spread. So anyways, let's look at our example. XYZ, a fake stock, it's trading at $60 a share. Our target price is that we think it's going to get up to $65. And we look at buying a long call spread in our fake underlying XYZ. We see the 60 strike call is trading for $4.75. We're going to sell one 
65 strike call along with it, and that's trading for $2.85. So net net, we're buying an option contract for $4.75 and we're selling an option contract for $2.85. That means that we can get this entire trade done for a net debit of $1.90 since we're doing it as a long spread one by one, that means that we're gonna spend $190 plus commission, and that will be our total risk of the trade. Uh, our max profit is now going to be capped at the 65 level. So in this instance, we take the width of the spread, five, minus what we paid for it, $1.90, and we see that our total upside is now capped to $3.10, or $310 less commission. Our break even, it's gonna be a little bit lower than if we bought it outright. If we bought it outright, our break even would be the 60 strike call plus 475, or 6475. Since we're doing the spread and we brought in some capital with it, we brought by selling that option contract, our break even is 60 plus the 190 net debit that we paid, or 6190. So in this instance, one of the biggest things about buying a long call spread is that time decay is hurting the one that you bought, but it's helping the one that you sold. And if we look at our profit and loss graph, we always like to compare it to if we just bought the stock outright. If we just bought the stock outright, our break even would be $60, and that's where we would cross the x-axis on our graph. In our instance, we just move it up a little bit, it's gonna be 61.90, but it's gonna be a lot less than if we just bought the at the money call outright. Another common mistake that beginning option traders make is trading in illiquid option markets. <laughs> Stocks have a lot more liquidity than options do. And why is that? Because when you look at the stock market, you have one stock to trade. In the options market, you have many different expirations, you have many different strike prices. So let's get a handle on exactly what liquidity means when we're talking about the stock or options marketplace. Liquidity, simply put, is all about how quickly a trader can buy or sell something without causing a significant price movement. A liquid market is one that is, has ready and active buyers and sellers at the current price. So if a stock is illiquid, the options are going to be. So I'm definitely not gonna trade options in illiquid stocks. So let's just talk about an example. Let's look at an option contract that is trading with a bid price of $2.50 and an ask price of $3. The ask price is the price at which you can buy the stock at, and if you bought it and instantly sold that underlying, you would be selling on the bid price, and in this instance, we have a 50 cent difference between the bid and ask. Now, that's common in the options marketplace, especially if you're not trading extremely liquid stocks. So in this instance, we're talking about a 20% difference between the buy price and the sell price. So how can we trade smarter when we're thinking about option trading in general? We wanna check volume and we wanna check open interest on the option contracts that we're buying. Now this is just a general rule of thumb, but if you would, you would like at least 40 times the number of contracts you wanna trade as the open interest. For example, you wanna trade 10 contracts, you wanna see at least open interest of 400 as far as the option strike line is concerned. Now, also, other little things you want to think about, if it's a $5 stock, a lot of times they're not very popular with options. If it's under $5, just buy the stock. Just buy the stock outright. It's a lot easier to get in and out of a stock than a very tiny or small strike option contract. And bottom line is, if you continue to trade option contracts with wide bid-ass spread, it's very hard to make up the cost of doing business. So we want to go out and look for, for liquid underlyings. Um, a lot of people that will trade options will stick to five, six, seven different stocks that they like to follow and they like to trade, and they're usually popular stocks, including some that are indexes like the S&P 500 index, the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. Those type of underlyings usually have a lot of liquidity, and it takes this piece of the puzzle out of option trading.
One more mistake beginning option traders make is waiting too long to buy back option contracts that they have sold. For example, let's say we sold an option contract for a dollar. Do we really need to eke out that last five or 10 cents to try to get the maximum amount that we could from selling that option contract? A lot of times you just wanna be willing to buy back and remove that obligation just to free up capital, to also not have to worry about the movement of the underlying stock. So how can we trade smarter? If I'm looking at buying to close an option contract that I'm sold, I always like to look at if I can keep 80% of the cash received when I sold that option contract, or another way to say it, of the premium or the price of the option contract. So if I sold an option contract for a dollar and I see it trading for 20 cents, well, I've gotten most of it out of the option. I've gotten most of that premium. Why do I wanna stick around all the way to the end and who knows what might happen? As a matter of fact, if I really want to stay in that contract, I should maybe buy it back and go out a little farther in time and get a little bit more time premium. Failing to factor in upcoming events into your option strategy is another common mistake that beginning option traders make. Oftentimes, if you're looking at options, I've seen a lot of people that will think, wow, look at all that option premium. Those options are really juiced. In this instance, you, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. There's probably a prevailing news event that is causing the premiums of the option contracts to be greater than normal. Or in the instance, are they sometimes too low? Do you look at that option price and say, wow, that's a real cheap option contract. Well, maybe there's a merger or acquisition that could be happening and the stock price isn't gonna move because it's already pegged at the price of the sellout. So how can we trade smarter? Well, it's quite simple. Do some research. If you're trading an underlying stock, you need to know three specific things. You need to know, is there any earnings that are coming out? Are there any dividends that are gonna be paid prior to the expiration of the option contract? And lastly, is there any known news event already? Is there a merger acquisition that is going on? Bottom line is all of these really affect the price of an option contract and not knowing them can sometimes lead you down the wrong path when trying to make a plan. A common mistake for both beginning and advanced option traders is the willingness to leg into spreads. A lot of benefits happen when you get into more advanced option trades. Instead of just buying calls and buying puts, where you will buy an option contract and then sell an option contract as a part of a big strategy. One of the biggest things that a lot of beginning spread traders do, or even some advanced, is they want to always leg into these trades. And what do I mean by leg into it? Let's say we're buying a call and then we are going to sell a call with it. So I get a lot of people come to me and say, okay, I wanna buy the 60 strike call and then sell the 65 strike call against it. Is it possible that I can buy that call and then wait to see if the market goes with me and then sell the call so I get a little bit more premium? And to that person, I always like to say, well, then you're not a spread trader, right? If I'm legging into these trades, for every time that I buy that call and wait, the market will go down just as much as it will go up and it will hurt me as much as it will benefit me. So how do I trade smarter? Simply, when I get into more advanced option trades, we enter it all as one trade. I buy the call, I sell the call against it, I do it simply as a net debit or a net credit to my account, depending on the option strategy, and I don't waver from that. So when I'm specifically getting into an advanced option trade, I prefer to trade it all as one trade. There are two terms in option trading that don't apply to stocks. They're called exercise and assignment. A common mistake of beginning option traders is not understanding these terms and not knowing what to do when these events happen to them inside their option strategy. 
So let's define them. If I exercise an option contract, that means that I'm the owner of the contract. And if it's a call option, it means I can call stock away from somebody. If it's a put option, that means I can put stock to somebody. Once that happens, on the other side of the coin, somebody is assigned. Somebody that has sold those option contracts will get an assignment notice, and they'll either be buying stock at the strike price if it's a call, or they'll be selling stock at the strike price if it's a put. If this happens in your option trading strategy, you need to be aware of what you could do and also aware of when these might happen. Very rarely do option contracts get exercised or assigned. Bottom line is when you are trading options, let's say I buy a call option, the market goes up, I am making money on that call option. The easiest thing for me to do is just sell the option contract and close out my position. On the, on the put side also, if I buy that put option and the market goes down and I'm getting profitable on it, why don't I just sell that put option and get out of the trade as opposed to exercising and either buying stock or selling stock. But if you are selling option contracts, you got to know that it can happen and it can happen anytime up until the expiration date. What do you want to do if it happens? First of all, don't panic. You want to call your broker and see, okay, what is my obligation on the trade? If it's a covered call situation and you're covered on it, well, all you need to do is let the stock get called away from you and you go on and you get the cash and you can go on to your next position. If it is not, if it's an advanced option strategy like a long spread, well, you might have to exercise an option contract and get the stock to be able to give to the assignment. Bottom line is, be prepared and know when it might happen, learn a little bit more about it, and then if it does happen, have a defined plan on what you're going to do. And another common mistake that we see with beginning option traders is getting stuck into one underlying that they trade in. A very common, more advanced type option trader likes to look at indexes. And there are many different indexes that you can choose from. You see them quoted every day on all the major news channels, the S&P 500 index, the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. Specifically with option tradings, if I'm looking at more neutral based trades, one of the things that's great about an index option contract is that the underlying is usually more tamed because you're talking about a gaggle of securities, right? The S&P 500 index is almost 500 stocks. And when one stock goes up and the other stock goes down, it kind of tames the movements in these underlyings. So be willing to learn about index option trading. There are a lot of benefits. There's a lot of differences be between the stock option world and the index option world. But if you're looking for an underlying that has a little bit tamer volatility than a, a specific stock option can. Index options are very good for those type of strategies. Well, that's it for today. I look forward to your questions and comments. In the meantime, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out.